Salvation is free, but deliverance is a price. Mm -hmm. A price of consecration and being set apart. Mm -hmm. So she says that, uh, so the second time, the next seven days, she goes to appear. And when the witch, when the priestess saw her and said, you are back, you are back. Then my mother tells me, said, okay, I'm back, but you need to help me. Then this woman looks at her and says, well, I can help you, but I can see. Now, I don't know what I they were using. I can see in the spirit, you have a son, but he's f very far in the rocks. He's very far in the rocks. In the rocks. Now, that's the statement of my mother. He's far in the rocks, and there is a strange star on him. If I bring him out, he will be a problem to our powers. Hmm. The only thing I can do, if you can offer sacrifices, but also if you can uh, accept the condition we shall give you. So my mother asked, what sacrifice? They, said, they told her I have to give seven cows for nine months. That is 63 cows as a sacrifice. Hmm. Then say, okay, I'll do that, you know, because she was desperate and she had the means. Then they tell her, okay. Seven cows every month for nine months. For nine months. That is 63. So uh, then the, the other condition was, okay, if you conceive and give birth and this is a boy, you promise you will offer him to that woman, the princess, as a husband. She didn't know what it means. She didn't know what it meant. First, she tells me she didn't know that it was that. Uh, and then they told her, that, okay, when you give birth, you must bring that child to the forest before the end of the first day. Hi, welcome to the Preacher's Portal. In this video, we'll be looking at James Kawaii's confession and testimony about how desperation led his mom into initiating him into the witchcraft world. Um, this is very common in the African setting, especially in this part of the world, the African culture, where the male child is regarded as more relevant than the female child. Um, this is a dysfunctional thinking, but it has been deep-rooted in the culture of the African man that if you don't have a male child and heir, you don't have a child. Now, now, this has made many women desperate into getting children by all means in order to be relevant and accepted in the family. Watch this video and learn. No matter how desperate you are, never go to the devil for a gift. If the devil gives you a clap, it's because he wants to take your head. If the devil gives you a shoe, it's because he wants to take your legs. Learn from this video. See you on our next upload. This is the Preacher's Border. Please hit the like button, share, and subscribe. So she, she gets into the family. Now, my father also was marrying her because he had been told he would find a young girl, marry Ali, and get as many children as possible. Because my father, being a son of a chief, a son of a, like a prime minister, he was the only son. His, mm. The brother had died. Uh, he had uh, seven sisters, the only son. Mm. So they were like, now you need to get a woman, get children, and raise a hair for the throne, mm. like the chief dog. So he marries for the purpose of getting a son. Mm -hmm. So when she married, uh, my, my father and my mother, they married, she gave birth. The first child was a girl. The second child, also a girl. The third child, also a girl. Now, by the fourth child, the entire family, the, 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 the chiefs, the tribe, they're all like, this woman is a waste. Because in my tribe, if you have only girls, they say you don't have children. Wow. So they wanted her hair. Hmm. So in desperacy, she tried to, she, she went different witch doctors in different parts of the, 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 the nation. And they, so she went, they told her, we're going to help you conceive. Then she conceived the fifth child, who was now also a girl. Hmm. She went on different witch doctors, different altars, different plans, and also she conceived again a sixth child, also a girl. Wow. <laughs> and she tells me that she was so desperate because she knew if she can't get a son, she will lose the marriage, and now her life will be wasted. Though at that time, she's to she told me that uh, uh, someone told her that there's someone who can help help her conceive a son. She had gone to all kinds of altars 
out of in Uganda and outside Uganda. She had traveled different parts and gave different sacrifices. She had the money. She, she could sell her properties to travel different places to get to help her conceive. Mm. So in this on this particular journey where she went, she was told to go to a forest in Tanzania. There's a place in Tanzania, northern Tanzania. There was a place. So she went there and she realized that when she arrived at the place, they told her she had to undress and live in the forest for seven days, going through cleansing. Wow. Before she appears before the person to help her. Mm. Now, before I, I want, there's something I want us to note here that that was the king of darkness. Mm -hmm. But they understand the principle of consecration yeah. and cleansing. Yeah. Now I understand after that. So they tell her you have to undress, stay in the forest, cold, uh, don't eat anything cooked for seven days. So after the seven days, you are clean enough to appear before this priest who was going to help her. So she says when she appeared after seven days, that this priest was a woman who always lived in the days in the forest. And uh, she was like the chief witch of the entire continent because all the witch doctors... I mean, the entire country. Of Africa, not no. continent. The, wait, she was the chief witch of the entire continent of Africa. Of Africa. So wow. All the witches, all the wizards, all the sorcerers, all the, the politicians, the leaders could go to her for powers. So she, she lived in the forest, that woman, that priest, and she had only one breast, like one breast in the middle of the chest. So all the people that went to her to see her often went through similar rituals. Similar rituals. They have to stay in the forest for seven days. Naked. Tin leaves and, and, leaves and, and, and fruits for seven days. Wow. And then after seven days, you appear before her. That was the ritual. And it was like a, everyone had to go through that. So she had, there were many people there. So she said when she appeared, when she came to her, she looked at uh, that witch, that priest looked at my mother and said, go away. I will not help you. So she has been in the forest for, for seven days. Now she's walking away. She says this. Now she's what she told me. She said, as she was going away, she looked in the sky and saw a sign, something that told her that she has a son. She doesn't know what told. So she, she goes, she walks back to the place where they register and she tells them, please, I want to go and try again. Then they tell her, but also, if you have to try again, you have to go again through another seven days. Now, the seven days she went through, and then she went another seven days, that 14 days. Later, I'll be sharing with you, when I was sick, my deliverance, I had to go through the same cycle of being delivered. The seven days and another seven days, but now in the, in the church setting. <laughs> because I want to tell people that uh, salvation is free, but deliverance is a price. Mm. a price of consecration and being set apart. Mm. So she says that, uh, so the second time, the next seven days, she goes to appear. And when the witch, when the priestess saw her, said, you are back, you are back. Then she, my mother tells me, said, okay, I'm back, but you need to help me. Then this woman looks at her and says, well, I can help you, but I can see now, I don't know what eye they were using. I can see in the spirit, you have a son. But he's f very far in the rocks. He's very far in the rocks. In the rocks. Now, that's the statement of my mother. He's far in the rocks. And there is a strange star on him. If I bring him out, he will be a problem to our powers. Hmm. The only thing I can do if you can offer sacrifices, but also if you can uh, accept the condition we shall give you. So my mother asked, what sacrifice? They, they told her I have to give seven cows for nine months. That is 63 cows as a sacrifice. Then say, okay, I'll do that. You know, because she was desperate and she had the means. Then they tell her, okay. Seven cows every month for nine months. For nine months, that is 63. So uh, then the other condition was, okay, if you conceive and give birth and this is a boy, you promise you will offer him to that woman, the princess, as a husband. She didn't know what it means. She didn't know what it meant. First, she told me she didn't know that it was that. Uh, and then 
They told her that, okay, when you give birth, you must bring that child to the forest before the end of the first day. In other words, before the sun goes over him. She tells me she didn't know what I was involved in. So she left, offered the sacrifice, returned home, she conceived. To a surprise, she gave birth to a boy. Now, the vow was to carry that boy from the city where she gave birth to the forest around 300, 300 and maybe 400 kilometers away from the city. And that is 1975. The transport means was not that good. I don't know how she traveled. So she travels from the city in Kampala to go to, to, to fulfill the vow. What shocked her, she tells me, when she arrived at the forest, this time it was not, she was not, she was, she didn't go through the ritual, but there was like a, a wedding. Hundreds of people were gathered. They knew she was coming, gathered like for what? And she realized it was now going to be the wedding of her one day old son and the 60 year old woman. So for those of you watching, I don't know if you understand what he's just said. <laughs> on the day he was born, on the day you were born, you were married to a... A 60-year-old witch. A 60-year-old witch that was the grandmaster witch for the, for the continent of Africa. of Africa. That is mind-blowing. And you know, what, what she told me, the, the, the wedding was conducted by uh, the, the chief, the witches of the continent, uh, first, and then the bishop of the diocese also came what? and conducted the wedding between this one day old boy and a 60 year old woman in the forest. Wow. So, and then, that was also when she told me, say, Are you sure? I said, Yes. Uh, bishop so and so, which I knew. Let us share what, how he got involved in my life. And now he, now he moved me from that same bishop from the witchcraft to the occult because they are different. Mm. So for her, when she reached there, she, there were all these people, the celebrations from different parts of the continent had uh, come to the forest for the wedding. Now, according to her, that was the, the moment where this woman, the witch, was to transfer her powers to the boy, hmm. the one-day-old boy. Now, I was one-day-old. I didn't know what was happening. So after the ritual, after the ceremony, days of celebration and what, the, the wedding, the marriage is conducted, the covenant and all the sacrifices. So they tell her, you know what? Now, this child is not just a child. This is now a man. So you're not going to breastfeed him because mm. now he is somebody's husband already. Wow. And she told me that in her mind, she said, well, 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 okay. I'll go home. This people will not be there. I have to breastfeed my child. You know, I've, I've suffered a lot. I've paid the price. I have done all this. I, like he was treasuring this child. Mm. So she returns home. Uh, when she went home, the, my father said, where have you been? He said, okay, and all this and this. Well, so did your father not know what she was doing? She, she did, he didn't know. He did not know? He didn't know. Because when she left hospital, she just went to the show. So my father, where's my wife? Uh, she's looking at her. So when she appears, where have you been? So he had no idea that she was this deep in her, in her passion to find a boy or to get a son. He didn't. The only thing he knew, like, my, the wife could, my mother could disappear for days. And he didn't know where, where he has gone. So uh, when she returned home, she says, she, I was a baby. She put me in the baby court, in the, in the bed. Then go dress up, uh, clean up, and then come and breastfeed the child. And when she returned, she found a python rolled, coiled around the baby. Yeah, python. That's yeah. <laughs> and she says she could not come near because the, of the python. So she ran out. The people of the village came around. My father came around. They could see the snake, and no one could come in. Could they not kill the snake? I, I don't know why. So she says for 30, for, for 30 days, for, th or for, for three months, she could not come near me. So was the python wrapped around you every day, all day, 24-7? 24-7. So she says she didn't breastfeed me. She didn't, uh, she didn't come near me. The, the, the whole village could come and just peep in. And then there was rumors around that this woman gave birth to a child and a snake. Now, I heard those rumors when I was growing up. It was the talk of the town, their community. You know that child is a twin, they could say, he's a twin, he was born, 
uh, with a snake. But my mother says, no, she didn't give birth to a snake. The snake just came when she came back to the house. Now, I, I don't understand how this was done. So after three months, my father left. Now she, he picked the six girls and left the home. She remained alone. And because of that, my mother got a mental breakdown. So she was not like a bad woman in the community. So she's left alone with a child, yeah. a demon child, with a brother who was living with her. Now the husband, my father, and the children left, so she's deserted. So by the time I'm three, three years old, I, the only person I know is my uncle and my mother who has no attachment with me. Why? She's mentally uh, disturbed. She always like, spent all her time alone in the bedroom. Uh, like, there's no way. So as a child, I didn't have any attachment with her. I didn't see my sisters. I didn't meet my, my father. The only person now I know is my uncle, mm. the young brother to my mother, who like was also, I don't know what happened, he was also addicted to alcohol. Mm. So he could drink and what. Now, so he tells me, I remember as, as the other three, when he was drinking his alcohol, he could give me, because that's the only thing he had. Mm. My mother was, did not breastfeed me. The husband had left, deserted her. And uh, she tells me that uh, the day my father left and with my sisters is the day the snake left also. Hmm. So when he left, also it left. So she remained with this child, but now she was so hurt. She was so heartbroken. And then she got into a mental breakdown because of the the husband leaving her, she's alone. And so as a child, I'm in that house with only my uncle. Mm -hmm. Like the, all the community, the relatives, the people in the community, no one comes to our home because the talk of the, the, the community, the talk of the village is in that house, it's a snake. Th there's a snake. Yeah. And there is a boy who was born. So, so you had no connection with anyone else apart from your mother who was mentally unstable and your uncle was, you know, a drunkard who was is struggling with alcohol addiction. Addiction. And then you're three at this point. Uh, yeah. Your earliest memories are around three and four. Three and four. That's the, that's the memory I have. And then something really tragic happened. So uh, I, the only person I know is my uncle. And one day, I am with, I'm, we are staying in a small room with him. I remember I was two and four, I have this memory. And uh, then the door, someone hit the door, opened it, and my uncle came running. And then these five guys, they were soldiers. By that time, the nation was in a civil war. So they came into the house, I don't know why. They came chasing my uncle, then they shot him. But what, what surprised me that they didn't kill him. They, they shot him five times and watched him bleed. Like, I'm there, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, and uh, they shoot, wait, they shoot, wait, they shoot, wait, they shoot, wait, they shoot, wait. And then I, the delivery, I remember they were, they were shooting in parts that would not kill him instantly. So then I see these men are standing there in the room and they're watching him and he's bleeding and bleeding slow. And, and they saw you there. Yes, they made sure that I'm there. So they bring me.